Oh, we're good. Can you hear us? Hello, hello. I rasa kalau boleh besar, besarkan uh, ni, I think betul nak kita kami ni kerdil di bawah tu. Huh? Uh, the the box yang besarkan orang tu. I think ini tu. Ah, ya, yeah, yeah. lagi sikit sikit lagi. Tak apa belakang tu. Ah, ah okay. Tapi kita nampak macam kita hobbit je kat bawah yeah. tu. Ah, bagi Dr. Nana duduk tengah sikit kot. Bagi air ke kaki ke kiri sikit. Kataan tak apa eh? Tak apa. Tutup kataan tak apa. No problem. Okay, thank you uh, Puan Damia. Assalamu alaikum and greetings ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the seventh session of the Flip Classroom Teaching and Learning Module Webinar, Teaching Impact to 2023. Our webinar today is broadcasted live from BIPD's EDTV studio via EDTV at PolyCC YouTube channels. Today is the 26th of September 2023 the 10th of Rabiul Awal, 1445. Okay. Um, without further delay, I would like to introduce to you uh, our very own uh, uh, Dr. Zainal Azhar bin Zainal Abidin, or also uh, known as Dr. Nana. Okay, we prefer to call him Dr. Nana. Thank you. Hi, yeah. Doctor. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Okay, so we'd like to um, talk about uh blended and flipped that's the title oh okay blended and flipped yes okay so um so if we can ask uh just a little bit like if you can explain to us briefly about the key concepts of blended learning and flipped classroom for our, our audience okay today. Uh, thank you very much bipd it's nice to be back home uh second home lah huh? then if first home dah lama so it's time nice to be back home uh, to 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 be part of this teaching and learning that is an ongoing process uh, which i feel is very important uh, no matter how old we are or how how far we have gone from the uh, from the government service i think at the core of policy C is teaching and learning yeah and if we don't forget that then our objective will not go astray yeah? so kita ni uh, di policy C our purpose is teaching and learning excellence in teaching and make sure that learning is happening and so itu adalah kita punya main objective supported by all other uh, in uh, bahagian and so on and so forth right okay your, your first question um what is blender what is flip classroom and, and so on and so forth okay a bit of history if you don't mind yeah um concept blended learning ni bermula um, actually 
semasa perang dingin. Siapa tengok Oppenheimer? Uh, you see Oppenheimer, a very popular movie. Uh, there is a time when the atomic bomb was done. So after that, when Hiroshima fell, the Cold War started. Uh, the Cold War started was the race between the United States and Russia. So that's where the uh, the Cold the Cold War started. During that time, uh, the digitization process uh, was was well addressed. Yeah, because they saw that uh, computers were the were the things that could help. Uh, their uh, armament uh, to to be much greater than their their enemies, right? So with that along the line, of course, everything has to start with the military. Along the line, it came on to teaching and learning. Yeah. So kelola term CBT, computer based uh, training, CBI, computer based instruction, and so on and so on. So yeah, mula lah berujudnya blended learning. Yeah. Kalau dulu we just talk and talk. Right, but when computer-based training came in, computer-based instruction came in, the, the the concept of blended learning has begun. So blended learning means whatever formal teaching that combines from teaching face to face, or and online or tech using education technology uh, technology. Uh, so whenever there's a combination, then we call it a blended learning, and that's the best approach. Because uh, sometimes uh, we find that uh, too much of one side, uh, either online or face to face, can be uh, rather boring and not not effective, right? So uh, we a good example is COVID. We were forced into total online, right? So it's never believed that total online was the solution. And we always say that blended learning is the solution, but no choice. Tak boleh jumpa and so on. We had to go into online. So, ada lah repercussion dia, especially in TVET, right? When when we cannot do things online 100%. So, blended learning is a mixture, right? So, what is split classroom? It's part of blended learning. Uh, it was introduced by a, a professor in Harvard by the name of Eric Mazur. Uh, I don't know how I know pronounce his name, name correctly or not. Eric Mazur, Harvard University, uh, who teaches physics, yeah? So he, he taught physics and then he found out that, that he was not improving. His students were not enthusiastic. Atau berasa betul-betul enthusiastic untuk belajar. So apa yang dia buat adalah dia flip kelas dia. So dia masa itu mengajar di dalam lecture hall. Ya, yeah, Lecture hall. Kita pernah pernah berada di lecture hall kan. Satu pecara, oh beratus orang di belakang. Ini mengajar, mengajar, his, mengajar physics ni. Yeah. So what he did was he flipped the class. right? Um, dia buat homework di dalam kelas. Teori dia buat di di luar. Teori dia student boleh upload dan belajar sendiri, tengok video or so on and so forth. Dan uh, whatever activities home untuk dibuat, dibuat di dalam kelas atau buat buat di dalam uh, lecture theater tadi. And the students find it exhilarating. The students find it interesting yeah, to solve problems in classroom with him being there. Because uh, his, his knowledge is very, very much uh, being needed to solve uh, homework problem. So this is something new where homework, kataan pun homework, yeah? homework bermaksud ber, dibuat, di, dibuat di rumah. Tapi dibawa ke dalam ke dalam waktu uh, sekolah, yeah. uh, waktu kuliah. So homework itu berubah konsep dan maka berwujudlah flip classroom. Yeah? Di mana kelas yang biasa tu di flip diterbalikkan. Yeah? Uh, so uh, Eric Mazur ni telah menulis satu paper, kalau you all uh, sempat baca dalam inter Google Up, uh, twilight of the lecture. Twilight ni maksudnya uh, senja lah. lah ya? Lecture ni dah sampai ke tahap-tahap um, senja lah. Orang tak suka dah lecture. 100% ya? lecture dulu tak suka dah. It's, it's twilight already. It's about to end dia punya phase. Uh, so everything now is going blended, it's going flip classroom and so on. So daripada situlah uh, flip, flip classroom gain dia punya momentum and uh, that as, as uh, we know that today a lot of other institutions dah uh, using flip classroom, using blended, then many more uh, 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 techniques mm -hmm. of introducing technology into uh, blended classrooms, yeah, mm -hmm. to make the classrooms more interesting, yeah. So again, I, I, I like I like to emphasize: do not emphasize on the technology. Uh, neither do you emphasize on the face-to-face. -face. It's the combination that is the trick, yeah. The combination is the trick that sparks the student's interest to learn, right? So, itulah dia basically the history of uh, blended learning. Okay, so um, 
Uh, do you have like can you share some of the maybe just because of uh, apa tu masa pun tak banyak kan maybe ada uh, untuk apa insyaallah sana yang nak mulakan flip classroom ni do you have any advice for them like what is the how to start okay um, all right um start with what you know right in terms of technology start with what you know uh, it can be your, even your whatsapp you can use your whatsapp as a technology base to to uh, uh, submit questions and thoughtful essays or give links to YouTube and so on. So many things you can do with this uh, handphone, right? Uh, so start with that. But more importantly is, you tahu apa yang objektif you dalam classroom, right? What is it that you want to achieve? Because this is just a tool. Ingat lah, technology is just the tool. Never forget the human punya capacity of learning and of being curious. Human mind is curious. Yeah, human mind uh, um, can be easily inspired. Human mind can be easily motivated. Uh, jadi, you sebagai pensyarah, perlu tahulah bagaimana you nak uh, spark those interests. Bagaimana you nak spark those motivation. Dengan menggunakan pakai bahan teknologi dan dengan menggunakan pakai bahan-bahan face-to-face. So, bila you tahu, then bolehlah you uh, plankan satu uh, classroom session atau satu strategi di mana uh, student will experience technology and student will experience uh, face to face and then together it comes together becomes an explosive experience for the students right um having said that uh usually people will will talk about challenges what is a challenge for um you know nak nak uh, nak melaksanakan blended learning flipped classroom ni okay um it's easy to teach without any technology. Right? It's easy to teach. Just go into the classroom, open up your whiteboard, and you talk to your classroom. Or you talk to the whiteboard. That's even worse still. Huh? You don't face the student. You just walk and talk at the, at the blackboard and whiteboard. And when the, the time is up, you're, you've done your, your part. So easy to do that. right? But you are dealing with a different breed of students. Itu dia masalah dia. Your students are changing. Yeah, ten years ago, maybe your your application will survive if you do that. But not now. Your students are changing. Students are being more bored in class. Uh, standard one hundred, two hundred students are so tablet frenzy, right? Okay. That by the time they come into polytechnics or into universities, they 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 miss that. You know, uh, flipping and so on mm. stuff that is going on with technology. Uh, so, uh, how do you talk and how do you relate to them? Now, uh, that being said, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that it's a good thing for students to be 100% uh, given the freedom uh, to be online. But there must be a discipline uh, for, for, for the students uh, to, uh, to practice both the technology and, and the uh, online punya balance, right? The challenges is uh, you as a lecturer uh what is the thing that you want to do most you have to understand yourself that's the main challenge mm -hmm. right um what is it that you want to achieve i want to achieve this uh, i want to achieve this this might be too high or too big a, a level choose a level that is uh, very appropriate for you and your environment start there first do not be over ambitious because once you fall, you will not go up again, right? <laughs> so start small, see your environment, see how the students take in their take in that kind of uh, activity. Sometimes when even if they like it, they will suggest what lagi lah jago kita suka kita suka benda-benda uh, macam tu. Mm. Uh, then you are motivated. Keep yourself motivated. Try new things. Do not overthink it and and so on. So we are easily being put down by one uh, the environment by by uh, the, what happens in the classroom the teachers the, the the internet and so on and so forth but that is not the thing that should you be uh, should you, you know think about because those are the things that will always be there I, I, those are the things that will always be there but what is the difference that you can make is you uh, how you overcome it that's why you are there as a human being and not just any ai teaching the students if not mm -hmm. The time will come, I suppose, when the AIs will be taking over your, your role. I hope not. Yeah. Mm. But this is to prove that you are better than an AI lecturer because you can think further than the AI. Right. So 
Think about it. Be a human being. Be excited about teaching and learning. You cannot be excited about teaching and learning. You cannot be excited about your topic. If you are not excited about your topic, your students will not feel the excitement. Right? It's like watching a movie. If the film is not excited, it's not exciting enough, Allah, ngantuk, ngantuk, dan sebagainya. Hmm. So the director of that film and you, the lecturer, on the same page. You have know how to know your audience. You have to be excited to tell your story. This is how I'm going to tell it. This is how I'm going to twist the story. This is how I'm going to use my camera movement and so on and so forth to make sure that uh, the, the story and the message of the, of the, uh, the topic is being um, given out effectively. So you are a direct film director. That is the thing I have to say. Yeah. All right. Um, so now it's just say that uh, all the lecturers are uh, all uh, macam excited lah kan kita nak kita nak buat uh, this new thing for for students. But uh, on it's not a new thing. Oh, it's not. It's not. Ah, it's, uh, not it's flipped it's classroom not, has been around since uh, two thousand. It's, yeah, it's okay. not a new thing. Right, yeah. Right. In a sense, it's new to new new lecturers. New lecturers. Ah, okay. Yeah. So right. It's been there for some time. Uh, okay. Um, and how about the role of institutions? Do you think uh, how how can they support um, lecturers? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, how do they, how does institutions support lecturers? Right. Uh, let's take the the instance of Eric Mazu, Harvard University. Right. Hmm. He came in. Uh, he saw he wanted to change stuff. At that time, Harvard didn't understand flip classroom or didn't didn't understand the concept of uh, CBT and so on and so forth. But what he did was revolutionary. He just provided uh, homework to be done during classroom. That's all. And to go back home and do your reading there and then before you come to the classroom. That's that's all. Mm -hmm. So there's not, actually nothing much if uh, you, you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. There's not much technology involved. Now lagi banyak lah. With, with the handphone, you can do so much now, right? And this is in everybody's hands these, these days. Data can be used, uh, you know, effectively from you. You, you mean I mean from TikTok to anything else. You, Benda to all can be used as part as parcel of your teaching art arsenal. So why not uh, use this? Yeah, other yeah, free. Yeah, everybody is using effectively. Uh, once in a while, you get the chance. You want to do a beautiful video, go go for it, right? Uh, but that is not the thing that must be on your mind. Oh, nak buatnya, I can buat satu video yang cantik drama lah, apa lah tu. No, right? Uh, you you look at today's TikTok, how many seconds are it TikTok? Three, three minutes, ke apa ke? and look at the, the way the thing is made. Everything, anyone can do that. It's a very simple, but it's effective. Uh, it, it sends out the message very clearly. And then don't forget the other element blender, right? Nothing is left online. You meet on the next day, you talk about that video. What do you think? Did you make love? I tried to do this, I tried to do that. And, you know, get them to give their feedback. So, those are the things that uh, you, you can do. So uh, I'm sure that one, the, tech, the, the institutions do not have to provide much, right? But of course, Alhamdulillah, at least internet, ada, uh, you got to have uh, special classrooms a bit, much like TECC and so on, so that those kind of activities will be done together collaborative, right? But you don't have to wait for TECCs to be provided. You can change your own classrooms, organize two classrooms to one, um, make it a bit bigger for collaborative uh, examples to be um, exercises to be carried out. Jalan. What I'm saying is work within your means. Capacity. Yeah. yeah. You can be creative there. That's where creativity is. Right. If everything is given, where's the creativity? Right? You are given something limited, then if you exceed using what is limited, that's the innovation. That's the creativity. Right? You can do it. I think we are all born with certain inherent creativityness and innovativeness that I think kita semua boleh apply, especially sebagai tenaga pengajar. Um, okay, and uh, I think um, when you have this uh, blended learning uh, and flipped classroom, actually, uh, well, how do you assess the impact of blended learning and flipped classroom model on student learning outcomes? Okay. Uh, first of all, you have to look at the student learning outcome. For example, uh, TECC classes, right, yang ada di polytechnics, uh, mainly in polytechnics lah. Uh, uh, TEC classrooms, kita kata specifically use for, uh, apa tadi? 
Upper outcomes, I will put that. Learning outcomes, uh, is it for learning outcomes that are C3 and above? That means application uh, and so on. I don't look for them yet. Synthesis, analysis, uh, use, use for those kind of uh, outcomes. Then it is more appropriate. Uh, for, for C1 and C2, you know and understand, you can use your normal classrooms. Because those are just, you know, you understand. You know, you understand. You know, you're just feeding, feeding the student. But in TECC, the objectives is different. You are assessing on how the students think and how the students react and how the students put ideas together and how the students uh, come up with a presentation and talk about it and then how they laugh about it, how they feel sad. Why do you think they fail? Failure is an important issue that is not being addressed in classrooms. The students fail. Okay, now why do you fail? What do you have you learned from your failure? So that not only you can uh, improve yourself, but or online can really improve yourself. Celebrate failure. Do not punish failure. All right. Uh, so these are the new steps yang yang boleh you guna pakai dalam uh, you punya uh, uh, classroom teaching. Okay. Uh, important thing is that uh, dalam dalam blended learning, you are in this uh, environment where you got one leg in the uh, actual world and the other leg is in the uh, virtual. online virtual uh -huh. world you got to find the balance ha ni yang lecturer susah nak cari balance ni ha uh, dia tak tahu mana nak nak you know uh, so kalau ya eh, saya buat ni ke terlebih ni ke terlebih macam mana nak combine together and create a powerful uh, 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 positive combination that is the trick that is the creativity that is the uh, innovation so those are the things yang you can uh, always uh, look in google there's so many um, classic examples that you know that might work for them of course it might not work for your class but we, we being humans we take this a bit we take here a bit we take a bit then kita combine try out right and uh, if it works it works if it doesn't work don't do that or maybe you can improve it on some other time okay. so actually it's very simple to be uh, to be on, on that path towards uh, using technology into it. but one thing I, I would like to add why the question is maybe you have not asked me why use technology yeah well, of course, the world is changing, you have to use technology. But we are always saying that we want to produce students who are SEL, student-centered learning, uh, you know, students. Kita kata, kita nak student ni uh, lebih student-centered, lebih dia boleh me, 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 mengawal atau boleh mengurus masa dia sendiri, boleh discipline masa dia sendiri. Technology with blended learning can, can instill those kind of values. Yeah? Kalau student dia tidak disiplin, dia tidak pandai guna masa dia, masa online dan masa classroom, dan dia gagal sebagai SEL. Yeah? Uh, kalau dia gagal sebagai SEL, that is the main objective sebenarnya. Of course, you boleh capai for the content and so on, tu boleh capai. But behind that is whether the SEL is being addressed or not. That is the main thing. That, that is the thing that everybody is talking about but nobody is saying. That is the big elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Right? If the student is SEL oriented, then lifelong learning is a no problem. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they will carry on teaching because they are very, uh, very conversed in how to discipline himself mm -hmm. or herself and then they take on new knowledges and change and this and that. Yeah. Uh, so, kadang -kadang we as lecturers, we don't see that big, big thing behind mm -hmm. the objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, we only see results. Dia dapat banyak mana marka, dia boleh jawab ke apa-apa. apa. Tapi di sebaliknya, is this feeder yang yang very, very important dalam where technology can help. Mm. Which is to discipline the students. To, to develop to uh, them. students. Yeah. Apa, behavior ke, personality ke, kan? Yeah. Where they take responsibility yeah. for themselves, yeah. belajar. Tu, yeah. Sebagilah apa-apa pun. Yes. Once they have that, they boleh they, 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 yes. jadi uh, seorang because yang... Because we always say we want to produce. It's in our books, it's in our curriculum. Oh, kita kata kita nak buat. Tapi how do we address it? How do we really come out? It's not in the outcomes per se, but it's embedded there somewhere. Mm. And with technology, you can do it. You can bring out worlds out there into the classroom and talk about it and ask interesting questions. You know, go around the world, like tadi pun Marina bawa kita around the world. Well, yeah, better yes, 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 yes. Cari masjid yang tercantik. Yes, ke, yes, mana -mana yeah. Kan, so uh, you know, you have to. It can be creative. Yeah. Uh, you have to take that leap using that technology. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I think okay. One last question. As we look into the future of education, how do you see the role of blended learning and flipped classroom evolving? And what trends should educators be aware of? Uh, this question is very much related to how technology is uh, evolving. Yeah? Uh, 
at one time blended learning was very much uh, VH, VHS. I tak tahu orang ingat lagi tak VHS ke? <laughs> yeah. so my time lah, Vitamax, mm -hmm. VHS, tapes, masuk tape keluar, itu, so on. Or slides. Slides, betul-betul slide in the no, carousel. So. <laughs> so at, that, at that time, that was it. But now we are going so far ahead that we are into the um, virtual punya, punya technologies, the augmented reality, extreme augmented, so on, all the virtual realities and sebagainya. Uh, so blended have got to embrace that as part of their online experience, right? Mm -hmm. And AI is going to kick in. Kat tempat lain mungkin dah kick in kat kita ni belum lagi. Uh, so AI is going to come into education. Personalized tutor is going to be a reality soon probably. Uh, you know, everybody is going to have a wiki robot that is assigned to him or her. Who reminds you, oh, you have not done this. You have not done that. Is there any problem? Uh, you can go here, you can go there and find out more, you know, so, uh, mm. you know it, it will come, at that time, the thing will come, right? You yeah, can ease juga burden lecturers, but, but again, eh, mula-mula tu akan susah lah, lecturer juga kena jaga classroom, uh -huh. dia kena jaga wiki robot tu tadi, mm. yang nak nak bantu, uh, you know, those kind of mm. things yang akan uh, be the challenges. But yeah. the, the frontier of learning and teaching is going to change, right? Uh, if we are willing to open our doors to it. Lah. Mm -hmm. If not, we can always close it up and have a normal, uh, have your usual traditional uh, chalk and talk, talk. Uh, and then when students go out, that's it. I mean, kita habis kat sini je, luar tu, your problem lah. Uh, that's the challenge and choice you have to make. But I'm sure we're not going to go that, no. that far, right? No. So these new technologies will change the way we teach. Especially for TVET. We can talk to TVET, talk to TVET. Apa nak bezakan TVET dengan non-TVET is uh, the, 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 the involvement of industry dengan students. Bringing industry as early as possible into the classroom, mm -hmm. even at the early stage. Mm -hmm. So you can go, yeah, you can go and, you bidang apa, okay, you can go and do a recording, interview or whatever and bring those things into the classroom and discuss them. So that is where the technology is. That's, that's where the virtual reality, the augmented reality can do for TVET students. Besides just simulation, that's the second part. Nah? Simulating them, pegang ni, buka komputer ni, ni, ni. Bukan nak katakan, uh, kita tak nak langsung hands-on. That, that doesn't mm -hmm. work. This is blended, okay? This is not uh, fully online. Even pilots need time for simulation. I don't know how many hours, yeah. But then they still value that simulation of course the simulation is very well designed mm -hmm. so we also need a tvet we also need the form of simulation so there are two things simulation and immersiveness right. uh, for tvet especially that right. differs from other kinds of uh, educational experiences right mm -hmm. so use them appropriately uh, on, for technological technological uh, courses so that uh, students are more well prepared before they go out into the industry world, right? Mm -hmm. Even the English classes can use that. So they're killing two birds with one stone. You can, you can have your English session and you can have your industrial experience thinking outwardness already in, into the classrooms. Right? So, so many things that can happen uh, within that one hour of class that you are. Still one hour now. Classroom name still one hour. Uh, just English, yeah. Just uh, English. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, those are the things that yeah, yeah, you believe. Uh, you you can explore lah, uh, in, in the new uh, technology that's coming out. Very interesting, very challenging, but it's also frightening because of AI, mm. what AI can do, and what uh, we should, how we should defend ourselves uh, with technology. You know, so maybe uh, this is some something also we have got to address our our uh, graduates before they leave. Is the technology is developing so fast mm. that it can bring the same amount of good and evil. To the society, to them, yeah. as as a, as future citizens. Mm -hmm. So, what is your our role as uh, educators? What is our role as institution? Mm -hmm. How do we prepare our students to navigate into this world where this is not good, this is good, this is if you go into down this path, you can lead to this. Do not let this thing come into and affect you, and and so on and so forth. Right. So many things that we need to consideration, and I think with with the continuous use of technology from semester one until semester six the students will get the feeling of it right this is this we can use this for this we can't use for this or oh, i feel because of this because lecturers say you know that that experience helps them to develop themselves of 
being entrusted into a new world of digitalization. Right. And I, I also think like uh, with, with what you've just said just now, there's uh, a continuation, collaboration, integration between the edu between the lecturers, between the, uh, the technology is so important. Yeah. Now. I mean, the communication is yeah. so important between everybody yeah. in order to make this work. Yeah. Why, why, why is that? Mm. You must understand technology. Simple language, zero and one. Very simple, mm -hmm. zero and one. Yeah. But that zero in one is all across the board. In all disciplines, in all works of life, everybody is using data technology. Mm -hmm. So it, it by its own nature is, uh, it by its own nature is breaking boundaries. Mm -hmm. Understand? Okay. Uh, everybody's using it. Uh, I can make this video, I can send it there. You know, it's, it by own nature is breaking. Jadi, Technology is borderless, mm. but we, we are full of borders. Yeah. I can't work with you mm. because of some policy or no. some social whatever or some, you know, okay. what I, I can't work with you because uh, we have not been told to work together. All right. uh, you know, uh, I can work with you. The students is my limit here. This is your limit there. Uh, we are so full of boundaries. Mm. So when we are, the user is full of boundaries and yet the technology is borderless, then there's that clash. Yeah, there's that clash. Mm. So we have to open up a bit so that we can use the technology effectively. Mm. Yeah. And we have to understand what borderless means in a negative sense as well. So it's something that is uh, very useful, can be out of hand if we do we misuse it, but then that's knowledge. Okay? Mm. Uh, any knowledge for that sake, uh, either pro, then other uh, consite. You as the educator, you've got to Make sure your students come out on this side rather than you know, choose the dark side. Yeah, they put that Okay, that's. I think we're coming to the end of our session. Do you have any uh, last words, uh, uh, last few advices, or last advice to to those watching this? Okay, um, my my advice is very very simple. Uh, be passionate about your work. Yeah, because if you feel zero. You feel that you uh, uh, you don't have a any uh, enthusiasm, uh, you know, uh, to any new any new level to reach. Then uh, you may find it difficult not just to use technology, but to be a great educator. Right. So it all begins here. It all begins here. Right. The world around you can be crumbling. The world around you can be crumbling. But you, sebagai pendidik, apa yang dalam sini? Who I want to make at least I try to make my world better, myself better. This small step of what I can do, I'll do first. And then I start there and I start there. And then slowly you will build and you will control the environment that is within you. And you'll be happy wherever you are. All right. All right. Okay. So with those words, uh, on behalf of BIPD and everybody out there, all the... Uh, uh, everybody watching, we would like to say thank you very much, Dr. Nana, for coming and sharing your uh, such valuable insights and knowledge into into this uh, whole um, uh, topic of blended learning and flipped classroom. I mean, we are always um, continuously learning. Yeah. Kan? I mean, uh, the 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 knowledge doesn't stop there. Kita kena sentiasa mengikut uh, arus keadaan. So uh, thank you again. Uh, we hope we, you can join us again no, yes. in the webinar. Inshallah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so with that, everybody, uh, this is the uh, wrap up for our uh, webinar uh, for this um, flip classroom for 2023. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you again next year. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye.